All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another Morning Musings show with Uma. Um, we are here on the Meet Me app doing a live stream. And today's topic we're going to be talking about is closure, which is fitting now that I think about it, because we are beginning to enter <laughs> Mercury retrograde. Today is May 5th, Cinco de Mayo, and Mercury retrograde officially starts five days from now. We are actually in the pre-shadow period. Um, so we're beginning to feel the effects of Mercury retrograde. So real quick sum up, because a lot of people may not know what Mercury retrograde is. That's just uh, very, very briefly. It's the planet of Mercury governs your travel, your technology and communication. So whenever a planet goes retrograde, we say that we have difficulty in those areas. So for three weeks, Mercury will be in retrograde, which means that we can expect to have issues in our relationships with communication, with communicating, communication on a whole, um, with transportation and with technology, you know, computers crashing, cars breaking down, all that kind of stuff, being delayed uh, at the airport, all that kind of stuff. It doesn't have to be that way. You can definitely do your spiritual practice, bump your vibration higher to the point where, you know, you, you, you feel very minimally those effects. But for those of us that are already having a bad day or just a bad month or bad year, we can definitely expect to feel the effects of Mercury retrograde because law of attraction, right? So uh, we're talking about closure today. That's the topic. Okay, working as a soul alignment coach, I do a lot of sessions involving couples. Um, sometimes it's couples together, but most times it's just people one-on-one -on -one that I see at my center. Um, a girl trying, mostly it's a female trying to cope with a breakup or a loss of somebody in their life. And what I've come to understand is this. We're not really good at healing. We're not really good at taking time to process things. So then what we do is, is we rush, we rush the processes. Uh, if I'm in a relationship with a man and he just all of a sudden breaks up with me, we go into so much mental activity. It, it almost looks like a volcano erupting. If you can see energy, it's like, right? Because all these thoughts just starts to just start to fly very quickly. Um, the first thing that usually people go into when they, when if someone breaks up with you right now, right in this moment, the first thing that we tend to go into is thoughts about our future. I don't want to die alone is the unconscious belief that we hold to, right? Yes. So good morning. So we, we go into, I don't want to die alone, or I invested so much energy into this, or how could they do this to me? Um, I don't want to start over. I don't want to be alone. Like those are the things that just starts to come up. And we, we hardly ever just stay in the present moment and listen to what the person is telling us. So when we get broken up, we just start to go into a frenzy of activity mentally. And then what happens is, is like the person's explaining why they're breaking up with us, but we can't hear it because we're just hearing, but we were supposed to take a trip in May and um, you just met my parents and my children. What am I going to tell my children? Right? Thank you, bingo. So when we calm down from that, when the shock has subsided, which of course by now the person has clearly left because nobody's going to sit there with you for three hours waiting for you to come down so you could hear again why you're being broken up with, right? When you, um, when we come down from it, then we start to have the questions, which obviously if we were able to stay present in that moment, we would have heard the answer to all of our questions, right? Why did he break up with me? Um, you know, according to him, I'm just giving different reasons why people break up with each other. And I tend to speak from a female perspective. So guys don't feel bad that I know I'm not saying, why did she break up with me? Just kind of swap it around for yourself. All right. Why did he break up with me? Um, many reasons. Usually it's because the partner has realized that this is not what they want. Um, even though there's good things, there's bad things and they just can't handle the bad things. Very rarely it's because of another person, to be honest. Like I know that's our biggest fear as a collective whole. Our biggest fear is he left me for somebody else, right? 
nine times out of 10, it's because they weren't happy in the relationship. As much as we'd like to think that everybody walking around is unhealthy, no. There are a lot of healthy people out here. They have, even if they come from like a single mom household, I know my kids are healthy. They're 14 and 16, never had a girlfriend. Don't even care. Don't even care. They're like, we'll have a girlfriend when we're done with school. Like school is most important. I'm telling you, there's a lot of healthy people walking around. And if you date somebody who's healthy within themselves, they're able to see the things that they like and don't like and make it just a very strong call because they're not dependent on somebody else for their happiness. Right. So this is why it's easier for men to break up with women, because men are raised in strong female households. Most men are. They see their moms, their moms are doing it right. So they they're raised with a certain expectation of a woman has to fend for herself, has to take care of herself. And then if you become very clingy or naggy or dependent on that person, it's very easy for them to say, you know what, as much as I love you. As much as I love that good putang or the nights that we cuddle on the couch, I really don't like how you treat me, how you talk to me. I get that from a lot of men, by the way. They really don't like how women disrespect them by talking down to them. Um, a lot of my male clients says, you know, they always throw it in their face about how much money they make or how um, they're not earning as much as the, you know, the woman is earning. And they said, the first time we get into an argument, the first thing is, is, well, you ain't shit or you don't do nothing or this, that, and the other. Right. So, um, that's a big thing. That's a big thing for guys, but the closure part, why is it that we can't let go after a breakup? There are many reasons. And that's what we're here to talk about today right? Why? Number one, we believe so much in our goals that we fail to check in with our partner is to me the number one reason why we can't let go of an ideal. Because just because it means we found the one or we feel that's our twin flame or soulmate or whatever you want to call it does not necessarily mean the other person does too. That's number one. So that's the first thing you have to come to terms with. If you get broken up with, you have to realize that you may have felt this way about this person, but this person did not feel the same way about you. They liked you enough to be in a relationship with you, but clearly not for their future. That's why the breakup is coming. Right. So we're, we're going to get to that too. So that's the first thing about creating the closure that you need is accept the fact that, okay, so Pretty said people want to understand what happened if they didn't have good communication? And that's why I said it's so important when you get broken up with to listen to all those thoughts that keep flying at you. I'm going to die alone. I'll never get married. Like you got to put that on hold and listen to what the person is saying, because when the person's breaking up with you, they are being the most honest they've ever been. And they're telling you exactly why they're breaking up with you. Right. So you got to listen. But if you don't get that, Let's say you don't listen, which is the majority of what most of us do, and then they go about their way. Don't contact them to say, hey, could you remind me again? What? Like, don't do that to yourself. Don't do that to yourself. If that person leaves and you didn't get to hear them properly, what they were saying, let it go. Because let me tell you something. We do live in an amazingly infinite, intelligent universe. So there may be reasons why you didn't hear right? Maybe you couldn't handle it at that moment on top of being broken up. Now you're going to hear exactly why they broke up with you. Maybe you couldn't handle it. So you just in a way like subconsciously shut it out, right? Yes. If you get broken up with and you couldn't hear what the person was saying while they were telling you, then it's best to just pick up the pieces and move on. And that's what we're focusing on now with how to create closure for yourself. Number one, accept that you and that person had different views on the relationship. That person may have been your twin flame, your soulmate, but you were just a girlfriend or a boyfriend to that person. And they went into the relationship. They found out they didn't like it. They don't want it. And they left. Now, that sounds simple enough, but you would not believe the feedback I get from women who are still holding on to the idea of us. Right? Um, one woman told me one time, well, he was just too afraid to date me because it was too real for him. <sighs> Let me just take a sip for this one.
That's a cop out. There's no person on this planet alive that is so afraid of something that they're willing to give it up. It's like saying, I'm so afraid of wealth that I'm going to give away all this money. I'm so afraid of this Ferrari that I'm going to give it away. People don't do that. Right? People don't do that. If they really love you and care about you and want you, you are not going out of their line of sight. You're not. You're just not. Um, think about this for a second. Can you really love somebody, really, really love somebody and walk away from them? No. So why do you think another person would? So that's the first thing. If um, and. I know, I know guys say that because I've heard a lot of my female clients come in and said, well, he said that you're just too good for me and this, that, and the other. No man would ever turn away anything that's just too good for him. If it's good, too good for him, he wants it. Trust me. <laughs> he wants it more than anything, right? Um, now, there are a few that may have like real good ethics and integrity and say, wow, um, the lifestyle that she lives, I can't afford. I can, I can understand that. So if a man, if you live a certain lifestyle and a man knows he can't give you that lifestyle, yeah, I can totally see him breaking up with you and walking away for that. But here's the thing. You still want to accept that. You still want to accept that because if a man says to you, you know what? I, you're too good for me. I can't, I can't give you what you want. You deserve better. Ladies, you need to hear that. You need to hear that because what he is saying is, I don't want to commit to you and be in a relationship with you. And I'm perfectly fine to sit on this couch in poverty with you because I love you. But you want to go to the bar. You want to go to Disney World. You want to go, you know, to your parents' house or whatever. And I can't give you that. So he's pretty much saving you a headache by saying, we don't have to sit here and fight every single day because you want things that I can't give you. It's best we just terminate it. Black Knight says, I walked away because I saw that I was not going to be valued and appreciated for things I did and was bringing to the engagement. There you go. So when people break up with us, instead of trying to fight for it to come back, what you want to do is let go. You just let go because, and this is the way I think about it. If a man breaks up with me, now remember, it took me years to get here because I was that girl that fought for things or believed he was coming back and all of that. You know, up until, up until my mid-30s, I was still doing that. But you reach a point in life where you understand things and this is where I'm sharing from is my older, wiser, hopefully, perspective. If somebody walks away from you, you never want to run behind them and bring them back because for the rest of that relationship, you're going to be running behind them. Good morning right? You're going to be running behind them for the rest of that relationship. And there's a lot of women in here that have been married and divorced because if you hear from them, they did everything. They did everything in that relationship. Plan the vacations, take care of the kids, plan date nights, plan, 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 do, do, do. And the guy just kind of like went along. And a lot of women are leaving 20, 30 year relationships because they're saying, I just, I want somebody who's more active. Right. Yeah. So that would be your specific situation. So if a guy breaks up with me, I walk away. I walk away because I, these are the thoughts that go through my head now. Um, I know he loved me because I was there. Right. Thank you. I know he loved me because I was there. So I know and trust that the feelings he had for me were real. But I also understand that he may not have been the one for me because the one for me would never walk away from me. He would get a taste of me and be hooked like cocaine, right? Or crack. Yeah, he'd be hooked like crack. Um, he wouldn't walk away from me. And then two, um, if he wasn't for me, he would want to be for me. Like my current partner right now is not so much on my level in so many different ways, right? Education, financials, all that kind of stuff. But you know what caught my heart with him? He said to me, I know I'm not the man that you're used to dating, but I wanna elevate and I wanna meet you where you are. And I'm trying so hard to be the man that you deserve. And that, that really warmed my heart because it's not so much about what you have, it's about your intent, right? And that's what you wanna find is somebody who has that intent of wanting to build with you and grow with you and to be better for you. And I, and here's the thing, I told him the same thing. 
because when I met him, I said, you make me want to elevate more. You make me want to become like a shining example in all areas of my life because I just want you to be proud of me. And that's the kind of love you're looking for, for some with somebody. So that's number one about closure is that if you have a breakup or somebody breaks up with you, don't run after them because then you're going to be running after them for the rest of the relationship. And that's not cool. And then two, if they're walking away from you, they definitely don't appreciate the worth of you in their life. So you want to receive that. You want to receive that. You want to forget about all the beautiful times you had together and all the beautiful memories. And you want to receive that as much as we had a good time, they decided on their own that I was not worth any more of their time. <laughs> Salma mom, good, good. That's awesome. <laughs> And Pretty says, you can have love for a person, but not be with them also. Absolutely. Um, my ex, I still love him. I still love him, but I just don't want to be with him because he was going in a direction I really didn't want to go. And I wanted to go in a different direction. And my current partner now is completely different from the man I was with because he's going in a direction I want to go in. Right? Here's the second thing about closures. You don't need closure from someone else. We always go into the why, what, where, how, when. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter, okay? If someone breaks up with you, that's all you need to accept is this person no longer wants to be with you. So you got to stop playing the narrative in your head. You know, you know that narrative. Oh, that's my twin flame. Oh, that's my soulmate. Oh, we're meant to be together. Oh, all the cards say, by the way, the cards say what you want it to say, just as a FYI. That's why I don't really like to do relationship readings. The cards say what you want it to say. You know, so you got to let go of, of your idea of what you feel this whole thing is supposed to be. Um, number two, cord cutting does not work. Cord cutting does not work because every single person I have met who did cord cutting said, oh, but the cords came back again. The cords are there because you want them to be there. Nothing can happen in your existence without your permission. So. Why do we create cords over and over again to people that have moved on and have gone on from us? It really comes down to us not being able to accept the fact that somebody doesn't want to be with us. We're not good, especially females are not good at handling rejection. Because when you think about it, we have been pumped up so much to believe we are like this kind of super high nova. So it's, it's, insane to us to think that somebody could actually find fault with us and the person who's going to find fault with us is usually our partner because our parents are cheering us on and if you don't have supportive parents i'm pretty sure you got supportive friends think about you as a woman if you get broken up with and you tell your girlfriends the first things out their mouth oh f him oh he's a loser oh you know what you could do better than him anyways i never liked him from the beginning we're not helping each other ladies we're not because we're encouraging each other to keep having bad behavior. Yeah. Yeah. If a guy breaks up, I'm not saying a toxic guy, right? If a toxic guy is toxic, he's toxic. But if a guy breaks up with you and he was generally a nice guy, what you want to do as a friend is just hold space. You don't want to down the other guy and then lift this person up because then it's making them feel like they're invincible. Like all men should bow at their feet or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But remember, it's never a, re a rejection. It's always a redirection. That's the way I take it. Um, I told you guys before my man that, you know, currently lives with me last year, we broke up for a month and I never took it as a rejection. I took it as God is redirecting me somewhere else because I was very firm in my faith that I'm ready to get married again. After 10 years of being divorced, I've just reached this point where I'm like, okay, I'm ready to, to be married and settle down with one person. And so when he broke up with me, it did come as a shock. It did come as a surprise. And I was like, you know what? That's okay. I'm just going to receive this because as much as I loved him and thought he was the one for me, I could be wrong. That's the way I was thinking. Right. And I was like, so I was wrong. Thank God. I only spent six months with him, not like six years. Right. Like that's the way I was thinking to myself. So I'm going to, you know, go and heal 
and just mind my own business and spend time working on me. And then I'm going to open my heart up again and invite in somebody else. And that's the proper way to get the closure that you need is you have to talk yourself through it. Don't talk to your friends. Don't talk to your psychic. Don't talk to anybody but yourself and be honest with yourself. When I sat there at that moment of my darkest, when that person broke up with me, I was feeling very low, of course, uh, especially us being a public couple. You know, I had to now face people on streams and talk about, you know, the fact that we were broken up and all of that. So it wasn't like I was allowed to have a private breakup. I had to share it with the whole world. And I just held my head high because I know I did nothing wrong and he did nothing wrong. At the time when he broke up with me, he had some serious stuff going on in his life, which I now know now, but I didn't know then. And that's why too, I tell you guys all the time, it doesn't matter you getting the closure from the person because sometimes people are so private that they're not going to tell you what they're going through, but it's not your business either. Because as women too, I think we're fixers. I think we want to come in and fix everything. So it's like almost like tell me and then they tell you, well, I'm, I just got, um, I just lost my job and my baby mama is threatening to send me to jail. And as a woman, we want to come in and fix it. Oh, I'll get you a job or I'll give your, your, your baby mama child support. But that's not required of you, right? We, we got, because you got to understand something. Those of you that are fixers, you're not really trying to help people. You're trying to prove to yourself that you're worthy. And you got to let that go because you, you're already worthy. You don't have to do anything to be worthy. You're just worthy because you have life, because you breathe. You're worthy. All right. So to end this talk about closures, <laughs> to close on this talk about closures, right? Accept it. Embrace it. It's going to hurt because when you have a fairy tale laid out in your head of how this is going to work out and then it doesn't work out, it doesn't mean the fairy tale is dead. It just means the fairy tale is meant to happen still, but with someone else, right? So this is what I expect from everybody in the community after hearing this talk. You are in a relationship either now or in the future and you're having the best time of your life and you're giving 100% your all. You're giving your whole heart, body, mind and soul. And then if that person comes to you with the dreaded dun dun dun, we have to talk, you go in there gracefully and say, sure, what would you like to talk about? Um, you know, this isn't really working for me. I think I'm going to just fall back and I just want to thank you for the time we spent together and blah, 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 blah. You listen, you be present, you hold off your rushing thoughts and emotions, you receive it, you open into it, you embrace it. And then you say, whatever you need to say, I love you. I'm sorry. It didn't work out, but thank you for being um, so open and honest with me. And right now I can't be friends with you because I have to go through my healing, but I hope in the future, you know, maybe a couple months from now, we can be friends and just check in on each other. That'd be nice. And then you hang up the phone and cry your eyes out, eat as much ice cream as you want and sit with it. Because remember always a breakup is not a rejection. It's a redirection for you to find somebody who really is meant for you. All right. So that's my little talk on closures.